Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 8. And in the last episode, I'm not gonna lie, to me personally, that was probably the toughest episode yet. When it comes to them like tugging with your heartstrings, when it comes to the kids, and everybody wanting to like punish them severely for stealing, except for Kettle, him being the only person not wanting to be too harsh on these kids, but he felt like he had to be because he had like a reputation to uphold. Everybody saw him as Iron Fist Kettle and he didn't want them to find out the truth. The fact that he is actually very kind kind-hearted and we saw that here with how pained he was when he saw the kid getting beat so brutally like Jesus Christ man that like <laughs> they gave him a stick to beat the kid with and he swung so hard that he picked the kid up off the ground do you know how hard you have to hit someone to lift them off of the ground these guys were not holding back, dude. So if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like, subscribe so that you guys know exactly whenever I drop a brand new reaction. You can find my uncut reactions over on my Patreon, which you guys can join for as low as $2. And anime sponsorships are back. So if there is an anime out there that you'd like to see me react to, then I will have a link in the description that'll take you to a video explaining anime sponsorships so that you'll know exactly how to do that. But we're also gonna be starting this video um, just past the little opening like MAPPA cinematic. We're gonna be starting at 15 seconds. So if you guys are following along, make sure to skip to 15 and we'll be starting this episode in three, two, one, go. Oh, and here we have the family. And Thorfinn witnessing this. Wait, is this a dream? Oh, wow. This is so strange. Does this mean that he may have encountered Anar in the past? Or is this just like his head screwing with him? Because obviously none of them died here. But how does he know what they look like when they were younger? Dude, I want them to focus more on Thorfinn. I want to see him be able to, like, overcome this. Oh my god! And the fingernails, dude. It reminds me of, uh, Sadako. How, like, her whole lore is that she's been, like, trying to climb out of the well. And she's been climbing so much that, like, her fingernails have peeled off and stuff. And Thorfinn's kind of doing the same thing here. <sighs> Are those his legs? Oh, they're trying to drag him back. Oh my god! Yeah, I completely understand why Thorfinn's always screaming in his sleep. That is some... Dude, that is some torture right there. Oh, man. Yep. Dude, what a crazy way to kick off the episode, man. Thorfinn has been going through it. 
And it's so crazy because he's such a, like, calm and, I guess, mild-mannered person now that you never would have expected. If, of course, you weren't in our position being able to actually see him dream, if you were, like, someone in the farm, you never would have guessed he was going through this in his sleep. But it makes sense, considering everything that he's been through. And all the people that he's lost. Man. Poor Thorfinn. I want to see some development on his end, though. Like, we have kind of been seeing him, like, you know, I guess, um... How do I explain it? He seemed very hollow in the beginning of the series. But since meeting Einar, he's kind of, um, I guess, had something to look forward to, finally. Which was, like, working hard on the farm and trying to work to buy himself out. But I think the biggest question there is, like, let's say, theoretically, he did save up enough to buy himself out. Or he somehow escaped. What would he do next? Where does he want to go next? What does he plan to do once this life on the farm is over? An empty man. Hey, ain't our chatting it up? They seem to be having a good time. That is a very uncomfortable feeling. I'd imagine. I wonder too. Oh dang, they're pulling with the horse? Let's go, dude. They're out here working hard. Yep. Yeah, are they jealous? Don't get salty now. After clowning them when they first got here. Now they're showing you up and you want to get mad about it? That's not it. Look, they are so salty, man. Who hurt you? Even he's like, dog, you gotta chill. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not that deep. Whoa, are they, like, building a, a place to sleep? Instead of living at the stable? Or are they repairing? Nope. Yep. He's getting lost in his thoughts.
He's forgotten something more important. What could it be? It's been so long, it's not coming to me if the answer is obvious. Dude, there's so much I don't remember. Like, what about Thorfinn's family? Is his mother and sister still alive? Like, because we haven't seen them since the beginning of the series, and I don't know if they were attacked or what. Become a true warrior. He's nothing. Dude, this, I swear, man, so many characters. Oh, man, I'm so glad to see this right now. Because there's so many characters like Thorfinn who just, like, live for the sole purpose of getting revenge on somebody. Like Sasuke, for example. That once they get that revenge, or once that person's gone, they're left with nothing, and they just wasted so much of their life focusing on something that is meaningless at the end of the day. It's not going to bring his parents back, or his father back. Dang, man, I'm so glad to see this, because, like, I don't know. I feel like you never really see those characters that are fueled by their revenge. You never really see the aftermath. I think even with Sasuke, like, he just redirected that hatred towards other people. All right, getting in some fishing lessons. What's Lent? Because it's Lent, is that like some sort of holiday? Dude, he's teaching them, like, a super valuable skill here. Ooh. Yep, this is the perfect time to change. Holy crap! This guy is so cool! This is your redemption arc, Thorfinn. Well, I guess... No, I was about to say he didn't really do anything bad. He has done some bad things, but... I don't think any of us think he's a bad person. So I don't know if redemption is the right word, but... This is the, the rebirth arc. He was lost in thought again. Oh, wow. <laughs> they use the exact same words. That's a pretty dang good impression. <laughs> yep. <laughs> pretty much. 
Yeah, he was more of an assassin than a warrior. Dang. Yeah, I think he is at least. He's had a lot of time to reflect on his past. Now he just needs to learn how to overcome it. Askelid. Look at that. Anar is so good for Thorfinn, man. Oh, it's the horse, isn't it? Wait, is it? Oh, dude. Did they trample their crops? I thought they would have, like, you know, messed up the horse. Like, hurt the horse to hinder their progress, make it a lot harder for them. But they just went straight for the kill shot. Those guys are so... They're such sad, scumbag human beings, man. These are like the worst kind of people. The people that see others that are successful and they just feel the need to have to tear them down from that success just because they're miserable. God, man. Losers. Yeah, he knows this was intentional. Yep, he knows. He doesn't care. I would I would be livid, man. Dude, they are so lucky that they have like kettle protecting them. These guys just signed their death certificate, dude. I 100% feel for Anar. Those guys deserve the worst. Jeez, what can Anar even say about this? Like, <sighs> my thing is, we can't just let them get away with this, dude. That's so disgusting. Because let's say they did forgive and forget. They went, grew their own pr their own crops again. Who's to say they wouldn't come back and do it a second time, knowing that we wouldn't retaliate? And look, this guy's going to defend them. 
Oh, okay. All right. All right. You know what? I take that back. I thought he was going to be like, oh, you didn't see it happen? Well, then I can't, you know, punish anyone. But it seems like he's actually going to investigate. And actually try to find the culprits. Oh, he knows. It's because they're sad, man. They're miserable. There we go. Respect, man. And we got to remember, this was, the, this was also the guy that tried to somewhat help the kids by uh, helping them not have to get their arms chopped off, instead just get a beating, which still sucks, but that's something you can like bounce back from. Once your arm's gone, it's gone. Oh, he knows the truth. Wow. See, now this is painful. Seeing someone like Anar be brought so low, to such a low point. It's like, oh man, these clowns, dude. Look, are they bragging about it right now? Yeah, they were. What's he gonna do? Dude, I'm at like the edge of my seat right now. Is he gonna punch him? Is he gonna tell him off? What a loser, man. Look at that smug look on his face. Oh, man. I'm not even in Anar's position, and I already want to knock his teeth out. Oh! Ooh! Oh, Dwarfin! Oh, my God! Holy crap, Andy knocked his teeth out. That's what I'm talking about. Dude. Man, I hope you choke on those missing teeth too. Look at his face. Jaw broken. Deserved. 100% deserved. You guys deserve it too. There we go. All you clowns can get it. Jeez. Yeah, we're outnumbered. Jeez. Whoa, is that Anar flipping him? Is he like seeing? Was that Anar's mother? What? Bro, what is going on here?
Dude, what is this? Can Thorfinn, like, communicate with spirits or something? Because that would explain why he's always seeing Askeladd around. And how this image of Einar's mother keeps popping up in front of him, even though he's never met her. What a crazy episode, man. This series is so good. Just when you think it's going to be a wholesome, like, farm simulator, it immediately takes a turn. And that turn is always crazy. Like, it's never too peaceful for too long. Which is kind of nice because every episode seems to give us a little bit of everything. Some nice wholesomeness at first, and then things, some crazy things start to come in. But, like... This is not good. I could easily see this situation turning into, like, Kettle getting in trouble because his slaves hurt free men and he should, I guess, keep a better hold of his slaves or something like that. So he's going to be forced to punish Thorfinn and Einar in some way. This is so bad, man. But... He deserved it. He deserved to get every single tooth knocked out, his jaw broken, all of that is deserved. Smack that smug look off of his face. That is, whew, that is such a good feeling. To see him get what he deserves, man. To see him not slip away with the, not get away with the terrible things he does. And Askelid! Oh, yo! Alright, so that was the end of the episode. What a wild episode. And my question of the day for you guys is going to be, if you were in Einar's position, what would you have done? Would you have gotten your get back and gave him a taste of his own medicine? Or do you think you would have had the, I guess, what's the word, the wherewithal? to understand the consequences of those actions and would you hold back i don't know if i'd be able to hold back man i don't know that is dude it's just like the idea it's not even them like tearing down the farm that's the most infuriating part it's the idea of them getting away with it and them like bragging about it and acting all smug about the fact that they just tore down someone else that was doing better than them all out of jealousy like and the fact that they could potentially come back and do it again that's why i'd want to like get back at them i could not just stand idly by and let them you know potentially come back and do it again or think that they can come and screw with anar and thorfinn with no repercussions like that's so lame that's so lame to me but let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And with that, I'm going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.